Awesome. Next up, we have Obama Snow. The uh, abominable snowman has been around since generation four, where it and its pre-evolution Snover harangues travelers in the blizzard along Route 216, preceding Snowpoint City. But today we'll see if Frosty was able to send chills throughout the competitive scene. So how good was Obama Snow actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Obama Snow's snow warning ability bringing permanent hail was an exciting prospect for the OU metagame. Ice types were quite rare, so it was likely everything besides the occasional Mammoth Swine, Weavile, and Obama Snow itself was going to be taking 6% each turn, which was incredible. Obama Snow made for an excellent leech seeder as the only type of Pokemon immune to leech seed, grass types, were afraid of Obama Snow's ice stab, and of course leech damage was accentuated by hail. The new ice body wall rain was also a terrifying stall machine, able to substitute and protect non-stop for 32 turns, which would be enough to KO two completely healthy Pokemon out from full health. However, the Ice type is famously the worst in the game from a defensive standpoint, making Wall Rain Hail teams gimmicky, since doubling up on Ice types left teams severely compromised in terms of threat handling, which wasn't ideal given the amount of Infernape, Heatran, Lucario, and such running around OU. Obama Snow's Stealth Rock weakness was also a crucial hindrance for a would-be defensive Pokemon. The biggest issue, though, was of course the OU Titan Tyranitar, who was everywhere, which meant that the snow warning ability that was so crucial to cutting down on the opponent's longevity while maintaining its own was contested by one of the best Pokemon around that also gave Obama Snow a lot of trouble. Hippowdon wasn't quite as common and wasn't good against Obama Snow, but its Sandstream certainly didn't help matters much. Obama Snow dropped to UU, but it certainly didn't last. There were no other Pokemon with weather abilities, so its hail went completely uncontested, except against Rain Dance team which Obama Snow utterly dominated anyway. Uncontested hail meant Wall Rain was free to, well, rain terror over the tier, which had an immensely difficult time KOing it, and the few Pokemon that could damage it got smashed by Blizzard, as well as worn down quickly in hail. Obama Snow was much more than just a catalyst for Wall Rain, though. It was immensely dangerous itself. It was great against the fire water grass cores that populated UU, throwing around Leech Seeds with ease. Magic Guard Clefable didn't take damage from hail, nor Leech Seed, but it was also a afraid of Obama Snow's Wood Hammer. The only Pokemon truly safe from the combination of Leech Seed, Hail, and Obama Snow's stabs was opposing Obama Snow. That is, unless Focus Punch was used, which was quite a viable option as its use extended to Registeel, Houndoom, Chansey, and a harder smack on Clefable. Obama Snow was banned to Borderline as a result, but interestingly, Hail with Walrein was so potentially devastating that Obama Snow's pre-evolution Snover was used in its steed. Eventually, OU Hail Stall stopped trying to make the off dead weight of Walrein work and instead simply used Obama Snow for the extra passive damage it offered. And eventually, Obama Snow even found a genuine role outside of non stall teams. Offensive Suicune had become incredibly popular, and specially defensive Obama Snow was the absolute best counter to it. Suicune couldn't even attempt to freeze it with Ice Beam. Obama Snow would switch in on it, as well as the terrifying Life Orb Starmie with utter impunity and fire off Leech Seed. Heat Ran would get worn down incredibly quickly by Leech Seed, Hail and Stealth Rock. Heatran was the most common Stealth Rocker itself, which Obama Snow liked because it meant its partner Starmie could come in easily and keep the rocks off, letting Obama Snow stick around without much trouble. With Protect exacerbating the effects of Leech Seed and Hail, most offensive teams got worn down by Obama Snow ridiculously quickly, and it became recognized as a genuinely decent Pokemon on a variety of bulky offense and balanced teams, no longer relegated to the small niche of Hail Stall, and its role in the metagame expanded upon the discovery of an expert belt sets effectiveness. Its jacked up wood hammer would eviscerate any Tyranitar attempting to replace hail with sand, while Earthquake would do that, as well as crushing Heatran for a one-hit KO and smacking Jirachi quite hard too. And Hidden Power Fire meant Skarmory, Bronzong, and especially Scizor couldn't wall it. This made Obama Snow an excellent wall breaker on offensive teams. It could turn its ability to check water types in an opportunity to open up a hole in the opposing team. Defensive Leech Seed sets suffered once Magic Guard Clefable entered the OU metagame, but as it turns out, Obama Snow could still counter waters like Suicune and Empoleon with just max HP, so it could run a sizable attack investment without giving up on its defensive utility, while now 2-hit KOing Clefable with Woodhammer on the switch. Overall, Obama Snow was not a Gen 4 OU staple, but any player of the metagame knew just how absolutely excellent it could be and respected its talents. Lastly, Obama Snow even had a niche in Ubers. It was able to counter the King of Kings, Kyogre, as upon entry, it took away the source of much of the Great Whale's power. It's 
its rain, enabling a bomb snow to tank its water type attacks just fine. Even a max power choice specs water spout would almost never to hit KO through leftovers, and in practice, it never actually would, thanks to hail damage knocking its base power down, allowing a bomb snow to fire off a leech seed and be good to go. It was a small niche, but a bomb snow was potentially one of the most obnoxious Pokemon in Ubers, and being able to counter Kyogre is nothing to sneeze at. Even Parasect sometimes got used for that reason. Abomasnow has been a major doubles threat since it first stormed onto the scene, entirely based on the power of Snow Warning. While Hail is still one of the less seen weather archetypes in doubles, it's still significantly better than in singles due to two factors, Blizzard's status as a spread move and the prevalence of Trick Room. As with many other doubles Pokemon, Abomasnow's low speed becomes one of its greatest boons in doubles. Trick Room allows it to function as mandatory team support for any Hail team, as well as a powerful attacker in its own right. While 92 special Special attack may not be the most impressive, it's more than short up by Blizzard's status as arguably the best spread move in the game under Hail. But the ability to exploit Trick Room isn't the only benefit of a bomb slow. It also means that it frequently has the priority in Weather Wars, since the slower a Pokemon's ability activates second. Despite its lack of attractive qualities as an actual mode of team, when compared to Sand, Rain, or Sun, Hail is quite good at countering those teams, and a bomb snow leading versus another Weather Setter will always get its weather off unless it's facing the rare. Hippowdon or the even rarer Iron Ball Tyranitar, and some weather is better than no weather, even if it's hail. Most Abomasnows ran full special attack investment to maximize their blizzard output, as well as full HP to ensue longevity. Quiet Nature added to those snow flurries, while Focus Sash in turn was just one more measure to keep Abomasnow alive as long as possible, in case weather was needed again. While Blizzard and Protect were what Abomasnow would be clicking 95% of the time, Ice Shard provided for a nice fail-safe bit of priority against other Trick Room teams, or if the dimensions never got twisted, and Abomasnow's last move was typically a Grass-type move for additional coverage. In VGC 2009, at the very first VGC Worlds ever, Grey Spec made a run to fourth place with her Abomasnow, although it was mostly filler on what was otherwise a standard rain team. A more impactful Abomasnow appearance came courtesy of Smogonite Shu at the London Regionals, where he placed second with a Trick Room team that featured Dust Noir, Camerupt, and Lapras. But Abomasnow's true standout year of Gen 4 competition was actually in 2010, where its hail was matched up against the titanic force of Kyogre and Groudon as weather setters. Paul McCurry Hornack showcased Abomasnow's strength as a hyper-offensive threat alongside a team of Kyogre, Palkia, and Hitmontop, where Abomasnow allowed his team to pivot between Blizzard and Water Spout for equal levels of apocalyptic destruction to win the Seattle Regionals in 2010. Brothers Ryan and Alan Chambers used Abomasnow to play 7th and 8th respectively, alongside a Ho-Oh, where Abomasnow served the role of nullifying opposing weather with its low speed and immediately breaking opposing focus sashes. Abomasnow also served as a perfect support to Mewtwo, who could fire off some of the most brutal blizzards in the game. But the most innovative use of that blizzard synergy came from Huey Ha, who placed fifth with one of the most legendarily creative teams of all time. Huey had Mewtwo and Abomasnow, sure, but he ran a bulky Iron Ball Trick Room Mewtwo that baffled his opponents as he survived huge attacks and got Trick Room off, or even exploded to get in his team's true ace in the hole, Spore Parasect. But this video is about Abomasnow, and that's what we'll focus on. According to Huey, Abomasnow was simply the best unrestricted Pokemon in the game for its ability to be the awkward third child of the Weather Setters. Abomasnow resisted Kyogre and Groudon stabs, could swap the weather on them, and even had the ability to one-hit KO the Behemoths via its powerful Grass Knot. Huey actually innovated even further by replacing his Abomasnow's Ice Shard with Hidden Power Fire, so it would win out in Abomasnow mirrors, something he further compounded by giving his Abomasnow two speed EVs so it wouldn't have to speed tie. Maybe it's no surprise that Abomasnow was at its best when weather was the most prominent. And of course, if you know anything about competitive Pokemon, we've got the Weather Wars to end all Weather Wars coming up. Black and White was the weather generation of OU, and ironically, Abomasnow and its hail were not part of it. Sure, people tried it, and it was naturally good at disrupting rain, and that was always a good thing, but it wasn't very good against sand or sun. Plus, if one wanted to use a South Rock weak weather setter, they'd go with Ninetales, since sun actually had genuine abusers, whereas hail letting Curem use Blizzard instead of Ice Beam was nothing to write home about. Plus, Specs Politoed occasionally used Focus Blast to nail Ferrothorn, and that came with the great side 
side effect of completely destroying Abomasnow. Abomasnow did have a brief spurt of popularity at one point with a set of Ice Shard, Wood Hammer, Hidden Power Fire, and Protect while holding an Expert Belt. As with the first three moves, it threatened everything in the metagame besides Heat Ran, and Priority Ice Shard was incredibly valuable for Dragons and Landorus Incarnate. The reason for Protect was that at the time, Rotom Watch and Scissor Cores were dominating the metagame, endlessly Vault Switching and U-Turning back and forth. Abomasnow could soak up Rotom Vault Switch, which would prompt Scizor, who always carried Choice Band, to switch in. With Protect, Abomasnow could scout if Scizor would use Bullet Punch, in which case it would switch out without fear of getting U-Turned on, or U-Turn, in which case it would launch a Hidden Power Fire and take Scizor out. It was a decent set, but lost effectiveness once awareness of it spread, and that was pretty much the end of Abomasnow in OU. In UU, Abomasnow took a backseat for a while, as the first wave of UU saw Sun dominate. Then once the metagame settled a little, Hippopotas' Sand and the fearsome Stoutland it enabled dominated the metagame. However, Sandstream was eventually banned, and with no other weather to get in its way, Abomasnow returned and wore teams down like no tomorrow, with Wall Rain coming back alongside it and being similarly absurd to deal with, which was impressive considering the slew of dangerous fighting types defining the tier. Hail teams also gained an excellent offensive weapon in Rotom Frost, whose buff stab bolt beam coverage was fully realized with perfect accuracy on Blizzard and extra chip damage on all of its checks. Eventually, Hail teams proved to be too good, as one could carelessly lead with the Bomb of Snow and get an incredible advantage throughout the whole game that was difficult to throw away because of how quickly everything in the metagame got worn down, with no real method of counterplay available, making it pretty much unfair. As such, Snow Warning was banned from Yu at the generation's end. While Abomasnow wasn't available in 2011, it made a graceful return to the scene in 2012 to do what it did best, enable the entire ideal of hail teams as a concept. Once again, Abomasnow was often found on hail teams, most frequently with Reuniclus, Chandelure, or Jellicent. Reuniclus could ignore hail's residual damage, while Chandelure and Jellicent's good matchups against fighting and fire moves paired up incredibly well with Abomasnow, and Chandelure's ability to remove pesky opposing steel types didn't hurt either. On the attacking side, Abomasnow's most frequent partners in crime were Gastrodon and Scarf Rotom Frost, who could start taking advantage of the inclement weather immediately with their own blizzards. By and large, however, Abomasnow itself stayed virtually the same. Randy R. Inanimate Qua won the first ever Nugget Bridge Major by using an Abomasnow in semifinals and used a different Abomasnow team in the International Challenge. Marco Nixcore S then used the same team to win the Pleasanton Regionals and went on to place 22nd at Nationals with a Mesprit and Gastrodon Trick Room team. And Dutch player Bjorn Iganyo Vissers started his own obsession with Hail Room by placing top 16 at the Nugget Bridge Major with his own Chandelure Abomasnow team. The most notable Abomasnow experts, however, were arguably the duo of Cassie and none other than Huey Ha, who built their Abomasnow teams together. Cassie was able to top cut nationals with her own Ice Gem Abomasnow alongside Reuniquist and an unexpected Heracross pick. While she ended at 29th, her Abomasnow became the mold for many Abomasnows years down the line. But Huey followed up on his innovation from the past year's world with an insane team featuring the utterly unexpected Choice Specs Gyarados. Yeah, you heard that right, Choice Specs Gyarados. Specs Blizzard was absolutely brutal in the hail, but it also patched up hail teams' weaknesses very nicely by bringing a fire resist as well as intimidate to protect against opposing rock slides and fighting moves. Huey took this team all the way to 10th place. 2013 saw multiple Obama Snow devotees continue to use it to great success, such as Iganyo's impressive performance performance in the March International Challenge, but it also introduced a whole new set of Abomasnow players into the fold. Leonard the Wobblefett Craft used Cassie's Abomasnow spread for 9th at the St. Louis Winter Regionals, Chris Ice Kings Wiley took it to 7th at the Madison Spring Regionals, Jordan Bradley made 3rd at Australian Nationals, and it had a string of top 8 appearances in the European Nationals. The most noteworthy of those placings was credit to Ben Gold at the Birmingham UK Nationals. While Ben just made top 8, he showed one of the most impressive examples of a new way of using Abomasnow as a scarfer, specifically to beat down the Dragons and Landorus T that ran rampant in the metagame. Ben paired this Abomasnow with an unorthodox attacking threat in Needle Queen and top tier support Togekiss, whose helping hands added some oomph to Abomasnow's somewhat wanting blizzards of its own. Enosh Human Shakar also took Abomasnow to a second place finish at the US Nationals, where he performed maybe the most infamous play involving Abomasnow ever, sacrificing it to his own 
own Rhyperior's Megahorn so his Scrafty could get a free switch in. Now, it didn't end up working out, so maybe take that as a lesson, kids. Don't cut down trees. However, 2013 also returned Obama Snow to some of its 2010 world's greatness, as two separate players took it to a top 8 finish. Sage and Park brought a team featuring Magmar and Marowak alongside his Obama Snow to make 5th place with the incredibly powerful Trick Room offense, going undefeated in Swiss rounds. However, the true master of Obama Snow in 2013 was none other than Ben Gold, who ran his own ridiculously cool team consisting of Substitute Rhydon and Rage Powder Volcarona, and slapped on his Obama Snow to continue his trend of using it in every competitive team he'd ever created. Ben made 4th at Worlds, and Obama Snow didn't have too bad of a presence overall. Though it was easily passed by Tyranitar and Politoed as a weather setter, it still was used on 5 teams with a 10.64% usage. Not bad at all. Weather was no longer permanent in Generation 6, meaning Obama Snow's stalling tactics were severely nerfed. Some normal types became fairies, meaning Magic Gar Fable was everywhere, and the influx of Megas bringing immense power creep, as well as Pokemon like Talonflame and the old standbys of Heatran and Tyranitar, meant OU was no place for Obama Snow, despite gaining a Mega Evolution itself. Its Mega was quite good in UU though. It did have to compete for a Mega slot with the amazing Aerodactyl, but it was a massive threat with the Swords Dance Ice Shard combination. Breezing past faster offensive Pokemon, such as Salamence when it was in the tier, and the aforementioned Aerodactyl, while blowing through bulky Pokemon with incredibly powerful wood hammers, with Earthquake rounding out coverage against Mega Aggron, and Hail, of course, giving it an extra boost of sorts by chipping just about everything. Wood Hammer was really crucial, as it meant it destroyed the incredibly important Aloma Mola, which fellow Ice type attacker Mamoswine failed to do. Being able to crush other waters, such as Swampert and Suicune, was incredibly valuable as well. Abomasaur was fairly one-dimensional and wasn't to be relied on defensively, so it didn't have anywhere near the usage of more versatile Megas such as Aerodactyl and Aggron. But it was an incredibly dangerous Pokemon that regularly KO'd one Pokemon and damaged another at the very least. And as for Gen 6 VGC, 2015 saw Obama Snow put together a scant few performances across the world, with Arben Tumaning taking 7th at the Virginia Regionals, Cash Costa 5th in Florida, and Gilberto Goracci 2nd in Italy. By and large though, it seemed as though the long snowstorm had come to an end, and with new snow warning Pokemon finally on the horizon, the Christmas season might be over forever. New Gen, New Power Creep, and Mega Obama Snow, who could not make use of the new Z moves, dropped significantly, going down two stages from UU to NU. And, unfortunately, Mega Glalie was also in NU, and it was a much better overall Pokemon, as it was much, much faster, and had excellent moves in Spikes and Refrigerate Explosion. Obama Snow couldn't even get one over on it, with its ability to destroy waters, because Glalie could easily slap on Freeze Dry and call it a day. Obama Snow also had to compete with Alolan Exeggutor, whose choice spec set was a veritable nuke crucially not weak to Stealth Rock, allowing it to make use of the resistances given by its grass typing to throw around its incredibly powerful attacks. And not being quadruple weak to fire helped Alolan Exeggutor switch into Slow King a lot more easily than Obama Snow too. When it came down to it, Mega Glalie and Alolan Exeggutor just did Mega Obama Snow's job but better. It wasn't a bad Pokemon, and Hail Chip was definitely appreciated against Pokemon like Incineroar, so it could definitely be used effectively but it just wasn't that consistent. And that's it, so how good was Obama Snow actually? Well, it's never been a truly elite Pokemon, mostly due to the evils of Stealth Rock, but it's definitely held its own. As the original Hailbringer, it did its weather proud, becoming known as one of the most potent Leech Seeders in the game. It fell throughout the generation, like most non-OU staples, but wherever it ended up, it's been a fine overall Pokemon, with this Generation 6 Mega Evolution helping it out. It lost it in Sword and Shield, but it might not need it with the smaller Pokedex, maybe. As for VGC, it's been a great Pokemon for many years, thanks to the importance of hail in disrupting the ever-present weather, whenever weather was the most powerful thing in the meta, at least. All things considered, Obama Snow has been quite a good Pokemon. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Obama Snow? How would you buff it to make it better? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much to the patrons for voting for this Pokemon for the patron pick and for continued support of our video. Videos. and follow my crew on these social media platforms and that's all i got see you next time everyone